All right, so last time I assigned you this video. Um, this one, this video is telling you the concept, the basic concept of standing waves. Okay, and now I'm gonna be presenting you um, certain slide or several slides um, that is also related to standing waves. So just a recall, uh, standing waves has two important properties, um, the node and the antinode. And then it was discussed in the video that the node is like uh, at any point where or any points where the standing waves has no displacement and then antinode will be the lobes that grow and shrink and reverse or this is where you can have the the maximum amplitude so if we're going to let's say for example i've given you this one and i asked you where will be the the node it should be here you have nodes here and then the antinodes will be here um, if you're going to be looking at the top the node will be there and the antinodes will be here, okay? So again, take note that if you do have a node that is the point we're in, there's no displacement. Okay, now um, we're going to discuss some boundary conditions. We kind of discussed this um, a little bit uh, before the break, but now we're going to relate it to standing waves. So there are several boundary conditions for standing waves. First is uh, boundary conditions for the strings or what we're calling the node-node boundary conditions. Um, best example of this one is a um, string instrument like a guitar, wherein when you pluck the guitar, the waves travel to the ends of the string and reflect at each end and return to interfere under precisely the conditions needed for a standing wave. So let's say, for example, you do have this string, and you can see here that this one is fixed here, this one is fixed here. So when you pluck the string um, and you send a wave pulse like this one, if the, if the wave travels from this point to this point, it will hit um, a fixed end. And then we know from the boundary conditions that if you have a fixed end here, there will be a reflection that will happen and the reflection is in the opposite direction. So it will go back and forth, back and forth until you created a standing wave. So this one, the wave is like as if it's standing still. All right, note that in this boundary condition or in this um, type of standing wave, you do have two nodes and one antinode. Okay, we said that node is where the uh, there's no displacement. So we can see that at the ends here and here, the string cannot move. So that will be our node. And then antinode will be in this point. Okay, so why must there be a node at each end of the string? We kind of answered that one already because it is fixed at each end. So there's no displacement of the, the string. All right. So um, now, what can we get from this one? So if we have this um, standing wave, we can know the wavelength of the standing wave, okay? So uh, we, can, we can measure or we can calculate the wavelength of the standing wave if we know the length of the string. So this one is the length of the string when there's no standing wave. And then when there's standing wave like this one, we can see that, this is um, half of the wavelength, okay? Um, let me explain it this way. So we have this um, as your standing wave. Uh, we know that if we have, for, ha for us to have a complete wave, you just need to have a complete crest and a complete trough. So if you're going to look at that one, if you're gonna be forming a standing wave, this one is just, half of the wavelength. So we can say that this is actually just half of the wavelength. So if this length is equivalent to half of the wavelength, we can say that the wavelength is twice the length of the string. Okay. Now, going back to the slide, if the length is actually um, half of the wavelength or if the wavelength is double the, the length of the string, uh, if we plug that in to this equation right here, we can rearrange the equation and we can say that for a string, the frequency for this standing wave is equivalent to V over 2L, okay? This standing wave is the lowest frequency you can possibly get from the string configuration. 
and we're calling this one fundamental frequency f1 or the first harmonic okay now if we do have first harmonic it means we can have second harmonic third harmonic fourth harmonic and so on which are the highest frequency first harmonic will be the lowest frequency possible so any harmonics after that one be, will be a higher frequency so let's look at the next higher frequency for the string okay so um if we're going back here we know that we have two anti uh two nodes and then one anti node if we want to make a second harmonic we need to add number of node and anti node so like in this case right here we can have three nodes and then now two anti nodes okay so if we're going to look at this one now uh, you have the complete crest and trough then it means that the full length of the of this standing or the full length of of this string will be equivalent to the wavelength of the standing wave so again if we apply or we use this one to the wave speed equation we plug in the value of l to the wavelength uh, we can get that the frequency for this harmonic is v over l um, and this is what we're calling um, second harmonic which is the second lowest frequency you can pos possibly get in this string configuration All right so let's have some practice so if we say that the first harmonic is v over 2l and then frequency uh second harmonic is a v over l then what will be the third harmonic okay so remember that there are always nodes on each end of the string um let me go back here so that i can explain it better so this one will be the the shape of the the third harmonic um why it's the shape let me show it to you step by step so we have two nodes three nodes for this two nodes for the first harmonic three nodes for the second harmonic then for the third harmonic we're gonna have four notes and then we can just draw the shape and this will be the shape of the um the third harmonic okay now uh, how can we um get the or how can we derive the equation for the frequency so again it's still it's still the length of the string uh remember for you to have one complete wave you need to have two bumps or one crest one trough or one cir two circles okay so it means that here your wavelength will be composed of this and this one so this will be your wavelength Okay, and then if this whole thing is a length, it means that this will be two thirds of your length. This will be two thirds, this will be one third of the length, then the total, will, if you add this one, that will be this one L. So it means that your wavelength is equivalent to two thirds over L, of times L. Or you can say that, um, the length will be equivalent to three lambda over two okay going back to the slide if we plug in that equation to the wave speed equation then we can say that the frequency is equivalent to 3v over 2l all right now um there are other boundary conditions so the next boundary condition is with the pipes we have two conditions for the pipes one is closed pipes and one is open pipes so when we say closed pipes one end is node one end is antinode okay but before we discuss that one i just want to show you what is actually going on inside the pipe okay here you will be able to see the the particles of the air that is moving back and forth you can see that one and then take a look at this um, this red dot here and this red dot right here so you can see this this dot is moving back and forth and this one is staying still 
So if you're going to look at this, you can see that at this point, there's no displacement that is happening. And then here at this point, there is like displacement that is going on. So it's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So that is the standing, that is what's happening inside the pipe. It's actually the, the, the air or the air particles is moving back and forth, it's not moving up and down. When we're drawing the standing waves for, of the, the pipes, um, or inside the pipes, we are drawing it like the string, but take note that the particles of the air is moving side to side. Okay. Now, um, if we're going to look at this pipe right here, so let's say, for example, we have this pipe that has length L, one end is closed, one end is open. So if you're going to draw the fundamental frequency or the first harmonic, you should have a node here and you should have anti-node here. Anti-node because it's open, node here because um, it is closed. Uh, it means that the air cannot move on this side. The air cannot move on this side, there's no displacement, and the node is the point wherein there is no displacement of the particles. All right, so we can say here that the length here will be just one fourth of the wavelength. Okay, remember? um for you to have a complete wavelength you need to have two bumps but this one is actually just quarter of a bump so it means that the length is equivalent to uh one fourth of the wavelength okay and then a uh, similar thing as what we were doing if we put this one in the wave speed equation we can have the equation for the fundamental frequency as v over 4l okay now for the second um harmonic we need to add number of um, nodes and anti-nodes. But still, one side should be node, one side should be anti-node. So if you're gonna draw that one, the shape will be like this. All right, so now you do have two nodes and two anti-nodes. Okay, so if you're going to look at this one, um, what is the, the wavelength here in terms of the length? or the length is equivalent to how many wavelengths? Okay, it will be three fourths of a wavelength. Okay, and then if you plug that in, in the wave speed equation, then you will have this one. Um, the second harmonic will be three V over four L, All right? And then for the third harmonic, you just need to add one node and one anti-node. Um, and again, this one should be node and the other side should still be anti-node um, and then we can see here that the wavelength is actually equivalent to five fourths of the wavelength that the length is equivalent to five fourths of the the wavelength okay and plug that in in the wave speed equation we're going to have uh, 5b over 4l right um, so why must the mouthpiece end be an anti-node that is the source. Why must the closed end be a node? Air can move there. There's no displacement. All right. The last boundary conditions that we're going to be um, discussing, that will be the open pipes. Or in the open pipes, when we say open pipes, we're going to have open-ended, wherein you're going to have anti-node on this side and anti-node on this side. So it means you will have two empty nodes, and then at the center, you're gonna have a node. So it will look like this. Okay. And then what, uh, what is the wavelength here in terms of the length? Or the length is equivalent to how many wavelengths? Okay, so it will be, the length is half of the wavelength. Remember, this is quarter of the bump, or I mean half of the bump, Half of the bump, it means half bump, half bump, that will be um, half of uh, half wavelength. Um, and then plugging that into the wave speed equation, we can say that the fundamental frequency will be having V equal over 12. All right, the next harmonic, which is the second harmonic, will have the shape. And if you're going to look at it, the length will be equivalent to the wavelength. So quarter, half, quarter. So you're gonna be having the length as the full wavelength. 
Um, and then you will see that you will have F equals to 2V over 2L for second harmonic. For the third harmonic, add one node and one antinode. And still both ends should be antinode. And then you will have the shape. Um, and measuring the, the wavelength or determining the wavelength, uh, it should be, uh, the length should be three halves of the, the wavelength. And the frequency will be 3V over 2L. If you're going to go back to the guitar example or the string instruments or the close close um, boundary condition, the fundamental or the first harmonic, the second harmonic, the third harmonic, and so on will have the same equation. All right, this um, YouTube video, um, I highly recommend for you to actually watch this one. There's a lot of cool demonstrations here, and he's explaining a little bit further about the um, standing weights. It's just six minutes or six and a half or almost seven minutes. All right, uh, let us I'll, I'll give you one sample example, uh, one example here, and then the rest, it will be your homework. Switch here. All right, so how do you answer these questions? Okay, so it says here, when a frequency of 60 Hertz is applied, a string wave rates in a standing wave pattern as shown. So you will see here, this one is an example of the node node boundary conditions, and then you will have like 60 hertz there. Okay. Question is first question how many antinodes are present? Antinodes, so it should be like one, two, three. So you have three antinodes. How many nodes do you have? One, two, three, four. You have four nodes. And what harmonic is this one? You remember from the discussion that this is the first harmonic. So it means if you add one more bump, that will be second. And then another bump, that will be third. So it means that this one is the third harmonic. Okay, now, what is the fundamental frequency? Okay, this is one thing that I really um, haven't emphasized. But actually, from the, the, from the equation, you'll be able to generate the, the fundamental frequency. This one is third harmonic, and you do have 60 hertz there, OK? If you're going to, to remember, uh, for the first harmonic, we have f equals to v over 2l for the calculation of the frequency, OK? Um, all right. So based on this one, actually, you can generate a relationship of the any uh, frequency of any of the harmonics with the fundamental frequency. It is basically multiple of the fundamental frequency. So if you do have 60 hertz here, that will be the third harmonic. It means that, so if you have 60 Hertz as your frequency for this one, you have the third harmonic and it's the harmonic number. So it means that your fundamental frequency will be equivalent to 20 Hertz. You'll have 20 Hertz here. Okay, now what is the period? Remember, the period and the frequency will have its um, um, inverse relationship. So if we have 1 over 20, we'll be able to get the, the frequency. OK, so what is 1 over 1 divided by 20? 1 divided by 20 is equivalent to 0 0.05, and then that will be in seconds. What is the wavelength? OK, so um, if we're going to look at this, if you're going to analyze this, remember that if you do have this as your length, and this is the wavelength, it means that length is equivalent to, or the um, 
the length is equivalent to um, so the, so you have like two thirds of the so two thirds of the length will be equivalent to the wavelength. Okay, so if you have that one, two thirds, and then the length is six meters, then you're gonna have um, what you're gonna have. You're gonna have four meters. Okay, and then what is the velocity of the wave? Then we can just apply it in this equation right here. Frequency will be 20 hertz. Wavelength will be four meters. Make sure you have the SI units or the correct units. Then you're gonna have 80 uh, meters per second. That's it.